everybody. It is the Rasball Fantasy Football Podcast. I am beat on, joined by Rudy Gamble. How's it going over there, Rudy? It is. It's going okay. I was not traded at the deadline. I'm feeling uh, <laughs> feeling wanted. Yeah, I mean a lot of uh, a lot of pieces moving around this deadline. Neither of us are on the move. Uh, you know, I still keep waiting for the call from from Gray one year for the baseball show, just to tell me that I've been I've been sold somewhere else or that he's replaced me. Um, you know, the the baseball show just has a has a turnover rate in, in podcast <laughs> co host. Um, but yeah, we're we're back here to talk about what happened in week nine. Trade deadline, everything, all that stuff, Rudy. Uh, let's just let's just jump into it. Let's start with uh, let's start with the trade sides of things. Um, Khalil, Her- Khalil Herbert off to Cincinnati, which is just one of a few things to talk about in Cincinnati. Zach Moss is out for the season, which prompted this move. Uh, Chase Brown has a, a big day as Cincinnati just smacks. Uh, 27 carries, 120 yards, five receptions, 37 yards, and a touchdown. What are you thinking about the Cincinnati backfield moving forward? Is this, you know, is it is it Chase Brown's backfield now? Do you think Khalil Herbert is going to kind of come in and they're going to be 50-50? What are your thoughts? I, mean, I think it's I think it's Chase Brown's backfield. I think. Uh... It's tough for running backs to just kind of plug in. I mean, it's not tough, but um, I, I really think he's just a depth play. I, I you know, like I, I think we've seen. I think Chase Brown's shown enough. I don't. I think. I mean, why would you? You don't need to give Khalil Herbert a lot of time. So I, I think basically, as long as Chase Brown holds up, I think. I think he's kind of uh, he's. RB one there. Um, and if anything, you know, like Herbert's fighting for the field to get with uh, Travion Williams for just for clear backup. Okay. Um, that I don't know that I think that's necessarily what's going to happen. Cause I, I just don't know that they trust or, or want chase brown to be that uh i mean zach moss is not exactly stiff competition i, I think we can agree that he's kind of kind yeah, of just a guy but, but, no but he i mean but khalil herbert i i mean he's shown stuff in the past um but it, it'd be different if you're telling me it's uh the second week of the preseason but yeah see you- i think running back's easier to integrate in than Almost oh. any position on the offense, because yeah. I mean, well, you essentially pass, you well, you pass have pass protection, protection, but I mean, pass protection is not that dissimilar team to team. I mean, you're as the running back, you know, you're not having to move that much, and, and you're not like running stunts and, and jumping and replacing linemen. Like you're there to pick up the unblocked person. There's it's not really a, I don't know. There's not nearly as much, I feel like, to learn at running back. I don't think Khalil Herbert's jumping in and taking 50% week one, um, or I guess week 10, but, you know, his week one. Um, but I do think it's it's a much easier position to integrate than, you know, what wide receiver. We've seen that takes, you know, about two, three, probably three weeks, I would say. Um, after the trade this year, for them to really kind of step into the offense, it could be. I mean, I, I don't I mean, know. It could I, be three weeks still, I guess. I, I mean, that that sounds like a fair number, anyways. Yeah, I'm, d- I, I'm just not. Um, yeah, I think, I think we'll see. But I, I think, I think as long as Chase Brown holds up, I think he'll. Uh... Now remember the um, also that. Yeah, this same like twenty-seven rushes is a lot. I don't know if that's the norm, but this team gave Joe Mixon a lot. I mean, like this same thing that Joe Mixon got was a healthy RB one. He really didn't share. Um, I think the reality going into the season was Chase Brown was an unknown. He was pretty untested. I think for most of us, he was. Oh, we had that really good screen pa- screen pass, and you know. But I, and, I, and the feeling that there's been other guys in Cincinnati over the years, Trevion Williams at 
was a pretty productive player. I want to say at Texas Tech. Um, it was like a guy like Chris Perry or something. I feel like there's like a there. I feel like there's been guys that were like, ooh, maybe they could be something at Cincy. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, but I, I, uh, I, someone had drafted a bunch of, I, I was high on Chase Brown. So I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy so far. And at very, I think at the very least, he's still like, it's just a matter of whether you get 60% of the snaps or 70 plus percent of the snaps is my feeling right now. And I mean, that that's a win uh, when considering going into the season, I think he like he felt more like a 40 to 50% guy coming in. Yeah. I mean, if he's sitting at 60, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of where he was in the 50, 60 range with Moss. So I don't, I don't know that that changes well, 60 a whole lot. plus. Yeah, maybe I, but I, I, I'm, yeah. I, I'm saying that's the, I, I'm putting in more. I think he's going to be more like seventy. Okay, I, I definitely see it for this week. Just yeah, again, I mean, even at running back, which again I think is easy, one of the easier positions to step in. They're Thursday night, like it's it's not really going to be a, a spot where they're going to ask him to and, and to right. step in against Baltimore on a short week. I mean, he's probably just got there today. Like they're playing tomorrow. So, um. uh, no, that's a that's a good that's a good point. I forget I forget about that. It's weird. Like it's hard to to know. Like the short week thing feels like it should be something, but I don't. But it always feels like you. Then you look at the box scores on Thursday, and it's like they doesn't they don't seem to make an accommodation. But uh, you'd think coming off twenty seven rushes. You know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's a game where, uh, yeah, they, they sneak a bunch of first and second down runs in with Travion. I don't know. Yeah, you know, they try to screw, use the pass more than the run. I don't. I, I found that uh, all that stuff tends to be overthinking it. <laughs> I haven't had any success with that overthinking, so I don't just be like, yep. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of Chase Brown again. Yeah, I, I think uh, I would actually use this opportunity if I could to sell high on Chase Brown. Uh, I think there's, I think there's a lot of people who think he's going to be like an eighty percent back right now because he was this week with Moss out. He might even be this next week again because of everything we're talking about. But I, I would, I think I would take this opportunity to sell high. the The Bengals aren't a pass or a rushing team i mean they they right they were playing the raiders it was 41 24 like there's a reason he got 27 carries yeah the raiders. I, like, I think I more like 14 like or 15 that. yeah it's yeah, what but, i mean that's kind of, again that's kind of what he was doing was like 14 15 already so i don't know that a whole lot changes for me in regards i think it i think it's maybe more consistently 15 instead of the occasional 12s, but he was still getting like a couple of, of check downs here and there. Maybe the involvement in the passing game is, is going to go up a little bit until Herbert's and in, in right. kind of into that side of things. Cause he did get five receptions in this one, which is, you know, the, the season high for him. Right. So, yeah, I, I do think he's getting a few more touches. I just don't think it's as drastic as, you know what I've been seeing people saying, like, but we'll see. Let's move over to Pittsburgh, where they made a move and went ahead and traded for Mike Williams, who did not really seem to be meshing in New York with Aaron Rodgers. It seems like a really short, you know, kind of experiment period for Mike Williams. For the Jets, just say we're we're done, we we're good, but that's what <laughs> happened. Um, Pittsburgh, they definitely needed somebody to be on the other side of Pickens, but is it Mike Williams? Is there, is this damaging to Pickens? What are your thoughts on the situation? Yeah, I don't think it, um, I mean, it's a good thing for Mike Williams. I don't think, um, you know, I think there's some opportunity in Pittsburgh. Um, and if you told me Justin Fields was still the quarterback, I would say, that would be awful for Mike Williams. Um, Russell Wilson just likes to throw the ball downfield. Um, you know, 
you know, I feel like when Mike Williams has been successful, it's been someone who's willing to throw it to him downfield. Um, what's confusing is that that's also what George Pickens is really good at. Like George, George Pickens is just better than Mike Williams in every part of this, where I felt like Mike Williams was a very good complement to Keenan Allen. You know, yeah, you had what, um, and you just knew Keenan Allen was. Uh, was a way more consistent, higher floor player, but that it felt like a couple times a year, Mike Williams would pop for like 120 yards and a touchdown. Um, so I don't think he's going to be fantasy useful at all. Um, maybe there's one game as a big play. Um, you know, I, I don't like, I mean, I, I mean, the reality is the best, like, I felt like George Pickens and Deontay Johnson were a good pairing. Um, you know, and even if you, you know, but it's not like Deontay Johnson cost anymore. Maybe there's some bad blood. I don't know. Uh, maybe Deontay Johnson isn't the best fit for for uh, a Russ well, Wilson. He, couldn't, he can't get traded back to Pittsburgh since they traded him. Oh, I didn't know that. Um but in any case, uh, I, I I think uh, it has no impact, and that basically, uh, you know, it it's no impact on anybody. I mean, of 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 use. I mean, could you imagine a three wide receiver set of Pickens, um, Mike Williams, and Van Jefferson? I mean, would that you know that that would that's just comical so yeah i guess if there's anything it's like i don't you can't have mike williams and van jefferson on the field at the same time like that that would be the most that that that's just ridiculous like i would just triple team i would triple team the third wide receiver i don't yeah. like i mean like you could you could basically like you could put like four six safeties on the field you don't need any quarterbacks <laughs> It's very possible. Uh, yeah, I would say Mike Williams becomes, you know, I would go ahead and, and pick him up if he's available. I, I saw he was dropped in a couple of my leagues. Um, and I think maybe you can use him as like a flex play in week the buys in like 11, 12, 14 if he kind of steps into the offense and looks okay. But I, I tend to agree with you that it's it's kind of just a wait and see if you know he can he's put up good numbers in the past. He's he's good at what he does, which again is very similar to what George Pickens does, uh, just maybe not as good and he's older. So it is kind of a weird overlap of of talents there. I think it might actually hurt Pickens in regards to just right now he's getting every single one of those jump ball bros. Right. You, you well, put Mike Williams on the field. Then... No, no. Van Jefferson would get some. No? I'm not really. He's not really been targeted that much. Um, well, he never is. No, but I mean, but but Pickens is, is, what, is I guess what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I think Van Jefferson's um, moving on up to the second team. <laughs> yeah, well, we will see with that. I mean, there's just not a whole lot that – of passing in that offense either. Um, I mean, especially this last week, they just didn't do anything. So we'll see. I think we're, we're in agreement though. I mean, he's a flyer at best and, and probably not going to have a whole lot of effect on, on much. Um, again, I think maybe just a slight drop for Pickens, but that's, that's pretty minimal. Let's move over to Dallas, where they traded for Jonathan Mingo. The big thing seemed to be the price, which is a fourth rounder. He does have two more years on a rookie deal, so you know that that factors into the evaluation. That being said, doesn't it feel like they could have just drafted a wide receiver in the fourth round this year? Man, like I guess like, they I, just I, need I, the depth. Like they just don't no, have the, no bodies. They, no, there anything's but I mean Mingo, that is it's just so ridiculous. It's such like 
it, it's so the the whole Jerry Jones and son GM experience is so bewildering. Like it, it's not they're not as bad as like uh, I'm trying to think the word. I think like um, the Mike Brown in Cincinnati. There was had a stretch. He was just putrid. Um, you know, but um, and obviously other teams have been bad. I, the Jonathan Mingo things. I, I don't. I don't think he, he hasn't shown anything. I how does he go for a fourth rounder and all these established wide receivers go for less? It, I, it's it's as if like Jerry Jones is just a fantasy player. And not yeah, a, it feels a, a like good, a dynasty football move. Right. Like you like evaluated got, and you were like, I really, I really like Jonathan Mingo. I think he's going to be good still. And you're just like, right. Whatever, whatever your asking price is. I mean, they did the same thing with uh, Lance. That guy's, he's, he's still not the backup. He's the backup now. No, no. <laughs> oh, ha. right, right. He's right. <laughs> a picture in that. What was that that movie? I'm the captain now, um, <laughs> Captain Phillips or something. It's like yeah, yeah that's, I am the backup now. I'm not the <laughs> emergency quarterback. Um, oh man, if there's, I mean, it it's almost like they should just make a deal and let him go and get like another year of college. He's still probably younger than like uh, Chris Wenke or Brandon Whedon was, um, but uh. Yeah, just a disaster. Hey, they let him keep just you know milking the Canada. Cowboys for backup backup money, whatever. Go to Canada. <laughs> I don't know, but it's because he could have been. I mean, he had skills. Very. I mean, like it's it's so yeah. There's actually like a like it's one thing when it's like Chase Daniel where you're like okay, that I mean the we didn't miss out on anything, and you got you can be happy the guy made. It. 20 40 million or something in backup money um but trey lance man that felt like it could have been something um so uh yeah the mingo thing is such a joke so i mean so ridiculous like so yeah that just makes me laugh makes me laugh <laughs> yeah so I, I think it's safe to say we don't think anything's happening in regards to his fantasy value um, I mean, I think it's it's CD Lamb, and then I guess if you want to start somebody else, it would be Tolbert. Um, but it, it, it. isn't Cooks too? Is Cooks out for the year, or isn't he back? Cooks is done. Yeah, Cooks is Cooks He's is cooked. Done for the season. Okay, I hadn't I, last I'd seen he was just he was going on IR. Um, yeah, now it's going to be ugly because I mean, the other thing we got going on there is uh, Dak is out for at least. A week or two. Yeah. Oh, I guess they haven't ruled out Cooks yet, but he hasn't been um practice. He hasn't even entered his 21 day practice period. Uh so I I mean he's at least four yeah. weeks out from, from join rejoining. Um Do you have Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so that's that's up and yeah, now, so I mean Dallas is just you gotta call it a day, you know. I mean Maybe a Dak said it best. What's gonna happen? You saw. You saw. He got caught in the sidelines. Same. Yeah. 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 But, um, I mean, it's very possible that if the Cowboys get out of uh, playoff contention, which they might be by the time Cooks is ready to come back, they may just release him. Just he's he's gonna be a free agent next year, and yeah. I mean they traded for. Mingo, they they seem to like Tolbert, or at least that's what all the talk was that week after he had you yeah. know his his coming out party. So if Cooks isn't back and they're out of the running, I really wouldn't be surprised if if they just released yeah. Cooks. I let think, him yeah, I'm pretty sure he just rents month to month. I, I'm pretty sure like Brandon Cooks doesn't sign he doesn't own housing. Yeah, no, no, he's 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 just. He's, he's he's got like he's just got a like I'm sure like Fendi or Louis Vuitton makes like one of those big poles with a bandana at the end <laughs> where you can just kind of carry around see see yeah you know, um, but but nice but a nice version. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, they yeah. might as well just cut them now because they're not making the playoffs. I mean, no, nah, and I mean, yeah, it. I mean, it's bad. So now you've got you already had a a meh running game, and and a extreme high target share wide receiver with who's now a little banged up, right? And yep. and Ferguson, but I mean, like that's you know that's a pretty weak second target. Uh, that that's an ideal third or fourth target. Um, now with a backup quarterback, yeah, it, it's it's gonna be pretty ugly. I don't I don't see I don't see any winners in this. I mean, you probably have to start Dowdle. Um, you know, who knows? I did did did, did, did anything come out? What did Zeke do? I didn't see. I, I didn't there. see anything official. I feel like. It did come out, but I never actually saw what it was. Um, so uh, I don't know. It was, it was for disciplinary reasons. Is is really what I what I saw. I think it was like a number of things potentially that just kind of led to it. Um, but I'm I'm not really sure. Hmm. It, it doesn't really matter. It it's it's over with. Uh, we you got hopefully you got your good week out of Dowdle. Um, yeah, I mean, you figure doubt. I mean, like, yeah, you'd still think like Zeke doesn't go right back into his roles. It's just, I mean, I don't know. I kind of feel like he does. You think he does? I don't know. I mean, I like, feel like nothing's going to change. Like, nothing's going to change here at all. Even I mean, though, again, they should. They should just yeah, move on from but, Zeke. He's right. he's not going to be around. Uh, Pretty sure his contract yeah. is is going to be up after this year, as well. Yeah, he he was signed for just this year. So yeah. again, it feels like one where they should just let him go and and just see what they've got in Dowdle and I think they Deuce will. Vaughn I mean, and yeah, and never... even even getting a look if if Dalvin Cook's corpse is is completely dead or not would be more useful than you know they know what they have with Zeke like. They've seen it for so, right up close for so long. Yeah. So let's just say, yeah, that that's going to be one of those teams where you, it. I mean, if it, you, I could see being hard pressed to bench Dowdle, Lamb, or Ferguson, um, like I hope you like. I mean, especially like Lamb. Tough, to, but you can't. You gotta have muted expectations on all of them. Um, you know, I would I would not want to start. I mean, Lamb would Lamb would be the, the one I'd want to start the most. Um, but I'd already be thinking he's kind of a wr two wr three with a backup quarterback. I mean, he, I don't think he's going to. I mean, if you give him twelve targets, I think he's he's you know he'll be fine. More than not, he's going to get you something. Um, I don't know, and and, and Mark, Cooper Rush seems to do kind of okay in his first start or so. I wonder if he's he, like I said, like the Dalton and Flacco's that when once you tag them in, they're really hot for two minutes, and then teams quickly like as if teams just completely forget what they can do, and they they didn't scout for it, and then once they scout <laughs> for it, it's like oh yeah, just take away those two passes. It's like yep, nope, that was it. That was, <laughs> yep. He, he, don't don't let him throw a back shoulder to Lamb. Got it. Something like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, poor Dallas. Yeah, gotta start. Gotta start. CD. I mean, you know, in PPR, I feel like Ferguson maybe is is probably gonna still get rolled out just because you probably. You, I mean, tight ends are just a wasteland, so you may not have anything better. But uh, not gonna feel great about it. And then, yeah, you have to start Dowdle after what he did for you last week. But I, again, it's not it's not a, a situation where you're going to feel really strongly with uh, with the backup, considering the offense looked pretty lackluster with Dak. So let's move off of that depressing situation and let's move over to Kansas City, where a traded wide receiver is making an impact finally. And that is DeAndre Hopkins, nine targets, eight receptions, 86 yards, two touchdowns. 
Do you trust DeAndre Hopkins rest of the season? Is he is he back? Where does he fit in in the wide receiver landscape for you for the rest of the year? Uh, I mean, what a – if you told me Casey was 8-0 and, now and – and like it would I would never have believed that the offense would be this dispiriting from a fantasy perspective. I mean, yeah, now now suddenly you have to start Hopkins. Um, I have no idea what to expect with KC um with that passing game. But um I think it'll be kind of useful. It's kind of almost like he's plug and playing with like someone like what you do with Juju Schuster. It's like Oh, uh, a, a a professional wide receiver is in KC. You know, Mahomes can figure out something with him. Um, yeah. So it's mildly interesting. I, I'm not expecting two touchdowns like, uh, anytime soon, but yeah, it is. It's just a a weird team that. Uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's not necessarily uh, rooting for them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I suppose so. Anytime a team is just winning, it, it starts to get, uh, you know, annoying for the rest yeah. of, of the league a little bit. But it was, I mean, it was a week where Travis Kelsey got just as many targets he can handle. DeAndre Hopkins got the rest of the targets and then, you know, the a few sprinkled around to the, the other weapons as, as Mahomes does. But I feel like Hopkins is stepping into, you know, the, the one role as much as there is one there. Um, he had 60% of the snaps. Worthy was at 68 Watson at 69%. So, you know, I feel like for this week is the, is the transition period now that we're, we'll see Hopkins be, you know, lead the team in snaps or, Maybe Watson is one simply because they like his blocking, but that that's not really uh, fantasy relevant for us. Um, I guess rest of season, where where do you think he falls among wide receivers? Is he a solid wide receiver two? Is he in the wide receiver three range? I don't know. I mean, with all the injuries and stuff, maybe he's in low two. Um. Yeah, I guess I'd probably put him in low two. I mean, he's got so little competition there. And it's a good quarterback. Obviously, he's a great quarterback. Um, You know, so. Would you take DeAndre Hopkins or any wide receiver in Chicago? (sighs) So that's the thing where at least Hopkins. Everything equal, I would obviously take uh, probably one of the Bears. There's certainly DJ Moore, everything equal. If you took, it feels like, though, it's it's real hard to predict on the Bears right now. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm taking DeAndre Hopkins. Just he is the number one receiver. Uh, you know, Cav- Kelsey's going to be the number one target uh, if, if it, but, things but even Kelsey's like this not, week. But right, Kelsey but, isn't guaranteed that. And if he teams and Kel- decide to take him away, right? Well, it's also that, him. and I mean, Kelsey's just getting. I, I'm get, yeah. I don't know the number, but I'm I'm thinking his A dot is really really low. Oh yeah. Uh, so so that that. So then yeah, I mean like, so it feels like Hopkins is is by far the number one guy for intermediate passes and. Yeah. No. So it, it's it's tougher. I think. Uh, you know. Maybe I take one of the Bears in a really good matchup, but okay. uh, but yeah, so that's that's where it's up. It's like I, I'm not, a, I wouldn't be enthused with Hopkins, um, but when you start going through all the injuries and stuff, there's a whole lot of teams where it's like, oh, I take Hopkins, and yeah, the Bears have good wide receivers. And you look at other teams, you're like, oh God, you know, Tampa Bay went from two to zero, um, you know, like. Maybe like a, a you know Green Bay was lighting it up. Now you'd be like, yeah, we take Jaden Reed above him. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So yeah, it's it, it it starts getting close to like oh 
yeah, I guess I guess he is an R, a low RB two. Would you take uh, Would you take him or or Marvin Harrison Jr., who has oh. just been boomer bust as yeah. anybody ever? Um, I mean, there is the hope that maybe he. I'd probably would take Marvin Harrison. I, I do feel vindicated though that I thought people were putting way too much. Um, yeah, investing way too much on, on him. Um, yeah, especially that. Uh, yeah, I th- so feel good there. Um, but yeah, so uh, I have to think about it, and I sh- I really shouldn't have to. So that, yeah, that, that kind of says kind of that, in that kind of sees like the numbers are there. If you look just fantasy averages. points accumulated and then everything, but like you're you're take you're dodging bullets because you're taking three or you're getting twenty. Like there's there's really not been an in between with him. Yeah. Speaking of somebody who has had no in between, Garrett Wilson, he has uh, he has become productive. With the trade of Devontae Adams over to the Jets, Devontae's been getting his targets, but you know he's not exactly been Devontae of old yet. Do you think that's going to make a switch over, like D Hop style, or is Garrett Wilson still the one here, and he's just now kind of getting open? He had ten targets, nine receptions, ninety yards, and two touchdowns in this one. Where does Garrett Wilson kind of slot in amongst receivers? Is he now? High wide receiver two. I mean, he was drafted as a wide receiver one. Is he potentially there? I mean, yeah. I mean, he looked really good. Um, taking a quick check where I'm at right now for this this week. I will say, I don't, I don't actually believe he got his sec the the touchdown feet down. I I, I think the knee was out before. Yeah, the skin uh, got in is what they they said. I I feel like this was it, a little bit of a Jets. Uh, you know, we can't let them just we can't let them fall out, guys. Let's uh, give them a little nudge here and, and help them out here. Right. Um, uh, plus, it was an amazing catch. I mean, right? Don't get yeah, me yeah. I mean, I I think he's. I mean, maybe high WR two, low WR one. I think him and Devonte. I think you're looking at an offense where. Um, yeah, you know, they're gonna have. They both have real high target shares. It's just the wide receiver landscape has gotten so blow. I mean, yeah, I'm I looking, mean, it's just those two. Like, there's nobody else <laughs> catching balls. Um, I mean, well, you've got uh, yeah, because Lazard's out now. He's done for the season. Oh uh, yeah, oh, I didn't know he was out for the season. Yes, yeah, so they've got sure. like. I don't it, know if he's done. Actually, I don't know for sure he's done yeah. for the season. No, but. it's like it. I mean, it really gets rough. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think, I think, you know, maybe it's a very high WR2, but he, I think I'd say he's a top 18 wide receiver. I probably put Devontae Adams as a top 18 wide receiver right now. Um, and yet I wouldn't put Rodgers very high. Um, it's just, it is a, a, a weird year. This doesn't feel, it feels like there's just a lot of, my receivers, I'm looking at my models talk spin out, you know, like I mean the twentieth wide receiver, I've got Josh Downs looking pretty good. And it's just like, oh God, I'd rather those two ahead of him. Um Yeah. So yeah, I th- I mean I think Garrett Wilson's a good talent and I th- yeah, it it I th- I think maybe at this time he was he's much better served being like a one A or a one B versus a pure one where you're, you've got no one else on the team that's commanding any respect. Yeah. Um, so I think he buckled a little bit under that, and it does take a little while to get chemistry with Aaron Rodgers. Um, doesn't you know? So and then not trying to be cheeky or anything. It's it does feel like a mo- like. It's hard to be a plug and play. Yeah. But that, I mean, unless you're Devontae Adams. <laughs> no, no, but it took him. Remember his first year, he didn't do anything. Well, no, I just mean like with, oh, oh, right now. Like right current, now. Right. No, I'm just year. saying, like, it's, it's like historically, like he yeah. is, he, and, um, 
Yeah, so he's he's kind of Brady esque in that, like Brady, you couldn't just step in as a rookie and and play with Brady. Like you had to yeah. build up to playing regularly with him because there's there's so many option routes in the Patriots offense, and basically right. every single throw with Rodgers is some form of an option route. Right. So uh, it helps if you can just get open, which is. Which is what Gary Wilson is yeah. doing now. Yeah, he's, he's a good. He's yeah, he's a very double right. coverage, triple coverage yeah. everywhere. Yeah, it's yeah, no sin not to be in like the Justin Jefferson type of stratosphere, but he's very good. So yeah, so like him. Uh, anyone? Any other wide receivers? You thinking? Yeah, let's 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 talk about Cedric Tillman because uh, I mean, as we're That's just talking about guys two, showing up, I two mean, weeks in a row, right? Yep, two weeks in a row, both with both with you know at least some time with Jameis. Yeah. So there's there's some saving. correlation there. He's Plus, saving my Ras Bowl, my Ras Bowl. No Amari, team. eleven for eleven targets, six receptions, seventy five yards, touchdown. He's just he's just getting it done. He's getting tons of targets. He is the wide receiver one in Cleveland for what that matters. But you tell me, what does that matter? Does that slot him in? I mean, we talked about D Hop. Would you rather have Cedric Tillman or D Hop rest of season? I mean, I guess I would, I'd say I'd probably put Tillman as a WR three, but I mean, he, he went from a, I would say like a, a very speculative best ball slash uh, bench depth pickup. To uh, to now, I'd say he's like he's a, he's a must start at a flex or WR three. Um, I I'm, I just haven't seen enough of him to kind of go much higher than that. Um, and it's not about the share. And I mean, like it does feel like uh, so yeah, I, I, there's the potential. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I'll yeah maybe put another another week on that. I'll feel even better. Um, but eleven targets is eleven targets. That's a lot. Um, yeah. So yeah, right now I'd be thinking like WR thirty. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I I am very happy for that. Uh, I, obviously, the the I think I picked him and Bub Means up in the Raz Bowl to. For my Godwin Shahid, um, so one for two because I think yeah. Bob Means is already on IR. <laughs> yeah, we're coming. We're coming to the end of the Raz Bowl regular season too. So, got to get the the Fab in and get. Ooh, get I, think I, I might have one, might have one dollar left. I had. I spent my last dollar this week. Um, I, oh, I might have missed it then. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you might have missed missed this week's then. Um, I think it ran like as we were doing the podcast. But uh yeah, I had I had Lazard who's gonna miss at least four weeks, I think. Yeah. So uh I, I went ahead and got rid of him because it's a best ball. You need people people giving you opportunities to make big weeks. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean I think I I think Tillman's like a high end wide receiver three. I'd probably rather have Hopkins just given the quarterback that we're talking about um, and the fact that who knows what, what Cleveland's going to do. I mean, they, Jameis may not be the starter rest of season. So what does Tillman's target share look like if they start changing around there? Um, who, who do you think? So that's, be, that's concerning. Who do you think is going to be the quarterback? You think um, – they have uh, was it Thompson? They have yeah, they have DTR Dorian Thompson Robinson, who was gonna be the, you know the the, the replacement for Deshaun, uh, and then he got hurt, and then Jameis had a big game, so they started to sh- they they gave him the nod, but if Jameis puts up another dud, I would not be surprised to see them go to DTR or they, uh, I think they actually. Got uh, Bailey Zappi as well when uh, Deshaun went down. So uh, it's Cleveland. Anything could happen, but they seem to want to have checked DTR out at some point. So that's that's my only concern with Tillman. If if we're talking about 
ranking him rest of season. I think as long as Jameis is there, he's a pretty safe, like high end wide receiver three, maybe even wide receiver two, just because he feels like somebody I'm not going to bench. So how could I not call him a wide receiver two until at least this run ends? Okay. Uh, we talked about Chicago a little bit earlier. I mean, it's just such a confusing situation. Plus, Caleb Williams goes from, you know, a 350-yard game to like a 150-yard game, which changes the uh, availability of, of touchdowns and a yardage week to week a whole lot. Uh, you talked about DJ Moore earlier. He hasn't led the receiving room in fantasy points since week five. And uh, after a big week six, Cole Komet hasn't done anything. And I mean, last week, I mean, literally nothing. Zeros across the board. Um, it, is, it feels like we're entering just lottery territory with the Bears room where one week, any given week, one of them could have a touchdown or two. But we're just kind of rushing rouletting it. Yeah. I mean, that is a crazy stat with DJ Moore. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it It has been. I just felt like there, there was a lot of chatter in the beginning of the year with DJ Moore, and the, he had been so consistent on, with bad quarterbacks and everything. Um, but he he also never had any competition of note. And yeah, yeah. that... Uh, yeah, and I wouldn't have, I mean, Komet, I wouldn't have said his big competition, but is something. Um, and I, I, I kind of see it as one where, um, yeah, I mean, may, may, maybe DJ Moore and Caleb Williams aren't a great, they're, they're obviously not a, some type of elite connection versus some of the other wide receivers in the room. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, th- I think you're. I think you've got pretty low floors right now for some of these Chicago wide receivers. Um, who's your Who's your f- best bet going forward? Uh, I think it's Rome. I mean, yeah, gonna, Rome that, that and was... Caleb really seem to connect. They're both. They got the rookie connection going. Yeah, uh, Rome. For, I mean, Rome's led them in fantasy points for the last two weeks. That's not, you know, an end all be all of of what matters considering that you know it's like two yard separation this week i think um but i just feel like that's where he's going that's certainly the one he connects with the most in regards to targets versus receptions like Moore and keenan are still getting plenty of targets they're just like the hit rate has not been been good enough um to really count on anything whereas you know, Rome and, and Caleb seem to be on the same page. So I think moving forward, it's it's a Dunze. I do think there's a little bit of kind of squeaky wheel gets the oil type of situation where if a receiver hasn't had a good week in a while, they're just going to kind of game plan a couple of looks in for them. So I wouldn't be surprised actually this week if DJ Moore kind of Gets gets a couple of plays for himself against the Cardinals, you know, not a, not great secondary. So I, I think that's kind of how it goes. But if I have to trust some trust somebody rest of season, I think it's a Dunze. Okay. Uh, yeah, that that would have been, you know, as someone who isn't watching them, that, that still would have been based on latest ones that, uh, and that the, just the general feeling like. If the if you're even with a rookie wide receiver, you're you're behind him. <laughs> yeah, kind of feel, yeah. especially um, with a rookie quarterback. It's it, it just seems like they're they're connecting. Yeah, yeah, good. It's great for them. Yeah, Cole Komet has been basically useless. But let's move on to some tight ends that haven't been complete waste of space, and they're thriving without uh, the wide receiver options around them. Uh, Mike Gesicki in Cincinnati without T. Higgins. I mean, Gesicki has been great this week. Six targets, five receptions, 100 yards, two touchdowns. 
I mean, as long as, as Higgins is out and he's already doubtful for this week, yep. is he is is Gesicki basically a must start given how crappy the tight end landscape is? Yeah. No, Gesicki's been good without Higgins. I mean, it, it's 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 kind of as simple as if Higgins is out, start Gesicki. If Higgins is back, yeah. avoid. Um so yeah, I mean they, they really don't have uh you know the Jermaine Burton uh breakthrough season has yet breakthrough game is yet to happen. Um you know, gotta look at it through like the, the LeVar Burton glasses. Maybe uh maybe maybe it, it's like twenty twenty seven in Canada, um <laughs> or the arena league. Um but yeah, no, I think a sickie's sickie's no brainer right now. Yeah. And low snaps this week, but that was again partially due because they were just blowing him out. He's not the blocking and, tight end, right? And Eric All is out too. Yeah, thank for the which is season. just going to help Kasicki even more. So yeah, absolutely yeah. must start at tight end, which feels very weird to see say about Mike Kasicki finally. But I'm so happy we're finally there. Right. I feel like um, we had to say tight end. It's like yes. <laughs> Uh, Kate Otten. Otten. I mean, the the number one target in Tampa Bay. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that was a pretty uh, impressive game against uh, KC. Um, as long as Baker is healthy, I think that would, you know, I know he, uh, yeah, he may miss the practice, but as long as Baker is healthy, Kate Otten is now a must start. I mean, Obviously, like I did not watch the game. I'm not obvious I didn't watch the game, but I'm saying, like, <laughs> it's obvious you could say, like, oh, well, like, they'll just scheme him out, right? Like, what? Just take out Kate Odd. And I don't like that. It seems like an easy thing to say. Um, I just, I don't know. It feels like if it was that easy, like, no tight end would ever get a thousand yards. So they do. Yeah, you know, there's some tight ends that put up big numbers. It's hard to just scheme him out. And he's on the field all the time. Which was always that that was that was the big plus with K Dotten. You might not like what you're getting, but he's on the field a lot. Uh you never know when a ball might deflect his way. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, maybe a, a quick lateral from Godwin or at Evans. So um or a touchdown kind of thing. So yeah, and so they definitely beat. went heavy tight end in this one. I, you know, without their wide receivers, that's not surprising. I, it, I think they'll probably continue yeah. to go that. that how how way could they? Why didn't they, they give came. up a third? Why didn't they give up a third for Jonathan Mingo? <laughs> like, why don't they believe in their team? Uh, uh yeah, I don't know. Why wouldn't they believe in in Baker Mayfield? It's not like he's shown that he collapses randomly and just normal they, regular they, games they've, they've got they've got they've got it covered they got progressive insurance they're good <laughs> but yeah I, it seems like they would have been a good target for any number of wide receivers uh i guess just they leverage so much of the future to get the 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 run with brady maybe it's just kind of a a thing where they need to you know settle the earth again back in tampa bay and get back on I, normal. Hey, i i I like Jalen McMillan. I keep I keep waiting. I you know, I keep thinking it it maybe it's this week. I mean Chris Godwin and Mike Evans aren't gonna play forever and they're they're starting to get up there. Evans thirty one, Godwin I think is twenty nine or he's gonna be twenty nine soon, I think. He's had it feels like he's had his share of injuries. No, I like I said, I I, I, I still I like uh I like Jaden McMillan. I'm waiting to to see, I, I felt, yeah, like maybe it was just because Washington beat my beat my Longhorns twice uh, in the la- in bowl games, but uh, yeah, I was I was pretty impressed with their wide receiver crew. Uh, so so far, it's one for three because the other guy, uh, Polk, is on New England, and I, I, I don't think he has done anything. Um, but I said I, I would not be surprised if McMillan puts up some, uh, you know, basically has some top twenty-five games in him this by the end of the season. Just the opportunities there. Yeah, I mean, it seems like the Bucks are going to probably sit him and Evans out 
this week. They get the bye in week 11, and then I would expect they're both back after that. When you say both, Evans and who? McMillan. Oh, is McMillan out? Yeah, he's he's out with a hamstring. He missed last game as well. Really? So, Damn. So I, I do like him. Um, I think while he's while he's yeah. out, I think I'm looking at, at Sterling Shepard. The Oklahoma you're, connection. You're desperate, desperate at wide receiver. Um, mm. but really it's Kate Otten. Like that's the yeah. that's the receiving option oh, you want God. for now. Damn, Maybe Trey McMillan. Palmer or Raheem Jarrett, but I, I think it's Shepard. You're I making up Otten. names you now. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, maybe Joey Galloway. <laughs> you know, Keyshawn I mean, in a pinch. If that's a if that's a fake name, then Taysom Hill is a fake position in football. Okay, because I, I just uh, this is why he's a best ball play. Like he's he's the the king of best ball plays, and this well, is why. Uh, speaking yeah, well, of tight ends, well, I think I mean it's fair to say that. Yeah. I don't know. He had, he had five carries he did, for 19, an incomplete pass, and then four receptions for 41 yards. Like, what kind of stat line is that? It, I mean, that's the Taysom. I, th- I think I, but the challenge with, like, Taysom is that, you know, you ideally want a competent quarterback in there to get you to, like, the red zone, right? Like, but that Basically, Taysom's value is very red zone dependent. Um, yeah, and he is, but he also gets a lot of the gadget work when they don't have a, a, a quarterback. No, so the, it's... right, no, no. But the thing, the reality is, like his carries, like I mean, they're not super useful. No, um, and his and his and his receiving is is meh. It really comes down to like the reason why Taysom's always been that interesting uh, tight end play um, is red zone carries. Um, and yeah, like, so for tight ends, like, you know, he was always at what man, he can get you two tight, two touchdowns. Um, and that's, you know, and, but when you have Spencer Rattler and Jake Horner, oh, I forgot the other, whatever that guy, other guy's name. Yeah. You're not getting into the red zone. Um, so, and Kamara has been good. So maybe I think Derek Carr is back this year. This, I mean, this week. But that, that's the taste of experience. Yeah, 100%. and yet the at least the rushes give you a, this weird little floor, but it really isn't much. <laughs> um, no, it's it's really not. I mean, you're it, it's t- it's it's touchdown or bust. Um, I mean, start him if you want to. It's just you're 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 praying for a touchdown. Which isn't dissimilar from a lot of it's, the tight end field, if we're being honest. Yeah, and be honest. Like the last time you started him, he didn't get a touchdown. Were you wearing your magic underpants? <laughs> I mean, what, what? What if? If not, I mean, what do you like? You're not even trying. Let's let's talk about somebody I would start over Taysom Hill, and that is Jatavian Sanders in Carolina. He is fun. Somebody has claimed stake to something in Carolina, and that is the tight end, tight end one roll for what it's worth. Uh, again, it's it's Carolina, so not getting overly excited here, but I just hate the inconsistency of Taysom versus, you know, just Tavian Sanders has had three out of four weeks that have been pretty solid in the last uh, right. month. So uh, I, I, I feel pretty con- good about his consistency. I, I, I like, I mean, as a as a Longhorn, a big Jatavian Sanders fan, um, and also Longhorn, uh, Jonathan Brooks is coming back. Uh, he might not. I think he's going to play. He's going to be dressed this week. How much he gets the ball, I wouldn't. Uh, I'd probably put it pretty low. Um, the problem is, I just don't know if this team's going to score anything, and. That it's that's the tough like basically if you said what kind of tight ends you want, it'd be like it'd be like one of two things, if not ideally both. One high scoring team, one B gets a lot of targets. Um I don't think Sanders is either. That 
Panthers certainly aren't a high-scoring team, and and I don't think yet, at least, Sanders is a guy that can get you one of those eight, nine target games. So you're going to be desperate for it, him to have a big play, and he is a very good athlete. You know, he. You know he's de- he's not one of these tight ends that has to catch the ball with low a dots, but um, the so easy for I could just totally picture a six target two reception for twenty yard game in him. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't love the choice between Taysom and Jatavian Sanders <laughs> there. Um, I think you're I think you're in real bad shape against the Gasicki and our Otten team. And I mean, this is, it's so random fantasy football. Is so random, like, right. I mean, like I, cause I, cause there's, there's very few tight ends I've railed against more than Gasicki. Cause I, I hate tight ends. I can't that are pretty much just all about receiving. Can't block. They don't provide any um, kind of dual threat, but enough. Yeah, um, I love those tight ends because you know that usually means they're at least out there to catch no, but, the ball. Like, well, yeah, they, they but lose they, snaps for sure. They lose snaps, right? So if you're like then, Mike is sicky level bad at blocking, right? And, and then and then you have people just saying, and I mean, you know, oh, I can't believe they're not targeting them. It's like, like, do you know anything about football? Like, you know, and like. And yeah, sometimes those guys land on a, a team and they're useful, like Evan Engram. But I've done like yeah, that 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 generally is not the recipe for a Super Bowl team. Um, aside from a guy that you could maybe give twenty percent of snaps to, like the old the original plan for Mike uh, for Mark Andrews when he couldn't block, even was just like, ah, we'll play him thirty forty percent of the time. It'll almost always be passing downs. Um, and we'll just bring in the other guys. Um, that's like the best you could hope for in those. Okay. What what do we have left? We only got one thing left, and that is asshole of the week. You know, there's, there's plenty to go around this week, um, but I'm going to go – I'm going to go with uh, Jamar Chase. We talked about the Bengals game and what happened. They put up 41 points. Jamar Chase, you know, wide receiver one, doesn't break 50 yards or get a touchdown. Uh, They did get him a a red zone look. At least there was there was at least a hope of that. But uh, very frustrating to watch that happen. Kind of the same thing with Marvin Harrison in Arizona where they scored 29. Bears looked awful. And and yet, you know, Marvin Harrison doesn't do anything. That's pretty frustrating. And then uh, Baltimore, you know, 41 points. Mark Andrews, who had been on a good good cycle, been moving up, two for 26. So just a few disappointing guys in high-scoring games where, you know, you feel like you make the right call. You're like, you're going to put up points. They're going to play. They've been playing well. And just, you know, it just doesn't go go your way. Yeah. No, I mean, I've got, I don't have a strong one this week, but I, I am quite uh, perturbed with Jordan Love. Um, I think he cost me a win in fishball, the median win. So I got, I got the win very Chase Brown-aided. Um, there might have been one or two other. Um, but yeah, I think I had a. But this is the second week in a row. He's my third best scoring wide quarterback, and the other two are Trevor Lawrence and Bo Nix. So we're not talking. Um. So you just, yeah, like I, I wish you just. And he, he didn't have a brutal game, but just no passing touchdowns, no rushing touchdowns, um, is pretty gross. QB twenty eight. Um. Coming, so he's been QB twenty seven and QB twenty eight back to back weeks, after a pretty insane run where going back into last year, he had seven top tens, a twelve, a fourteen, and eleven across his last ten starts, an absolute 
you know, must start to go then two shitty starts in a row. I guess Jacksonville, he got, he was out for some of it, but still at Jacksonville to get 22 attempts um, and no touchdowns. Just bad. So, uh, yeah, not, not love. Other, (laughs) other, other fist. Other fish. Yeah, George. and uh, he looked he looked bad out there as well. Just really banged up still. Um, uh, so that that was it was it was a bad game. Um, tough. Hopefully, I mean, tough hopefully, hopefully them, but it's home. I mean, yeah, they get, it's tough when you face a team like that at home. I feel like you got to yeah. you, at Detroit would have been might have been one where you have to think about sitting. But then the game script would be great. So, say living. Yeah. Bye week comes at the right time for Green Bay as they get to get healthy, which they desperately needed. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna get out of here though. If you have any questions left for us, you can find us on Twitter. I'm at Razbeadon at Rudy Gamble. You can find us on youtube.com slash Razball Fantasy. The Sunday start sit show uh, is always on for two hours before the games. Uh, I jumped on this week for the last hour or so or 45 minutes. So, um, you know, there's a bunch of bunch of good guys over there as well. If you have specific start sit questions, Rudy, good luck in your start sits yourself and uh, talk to you next week. Sounds good. All right. See you.